Hey everyone, welcome back to A Better Biomed. It's Friday and I just got home and today has been a pretty stressful day. Pretty stressful. I wanted to make a very positive video and I'm still gonna do that guys. But uh, I am so glad that I'm home um, because things are just not exactly cool all the time and extremely overworked and everybody's wore out but um, every day I go to work I told you guys in a video previous that every day I go to work I find out that I got something new that's assigned to me that wasn't before and I never go home with a day where I work less than the day before I always have more to do and it never changes and I get very stressed out but in light of this it brings me to the point of today's video I wanted to talk to you guys about resignations and it just got me thinking today that this is a delicate piece of a biomed's career that you're gonna have to deal with now the days of Working for a hospital for 30 plus years, 40 years, that isn't so common anymore. And in fact, in a lot of ways, it's going to cap out your career a little prematurely. You're not going to have the breadth of experience. You're just going to be a very limited technician if you stay in one place for 30 plus years. So in light of that, resignations is part of your career that you are going to have to deal with and... There's lots of reasons why biomeds resign. Maybe you don't like your job. Maybe you've got new career opportunities someplace else. Maybe you want to take a turn. Maybe you want to try something else. I know biomeds that are no longer biomeds. But, you know, that's just it. At some point, you're going to have to resign. And it's a very delicate process. And I just want to talk to you guys and make sure that you do it correctly. Because resignations should not be an emotional issue, all right? It's, it's something that should be professional in all aspects, from your resignation letter to your conduct to your work ethic right up until the day you leave. It, it should all be paramount, professional. So let's talk about that. Uh, when you are thinking about resigning from your position for whatever reason, there's some prep work that you need to do. You need to do your homework. You need to contact HR and see what their policy are, excuse me, what their policy is for your PTO. And what about your commitments? If you have any pre-existing commitments for whatever reason, uh, Maybe you signed a commitment for training or whatever. You need to go talk to HR and figure out what your commitments are, if there are any. Uh, if you have a debt to the hospital for whatever reason, you need to make sure you are aware of that before you submit your letter of resignation. Because trust me, when you submit that letter, consider it done. It's done. Whether or not you intended on it, if you were trying to bluff your bosses, it's done. When you submit that letter, as far as you are concerned, in two weeks, one month, whatever you uh, wrote on your letter of resignation, that's it. Consider that gospel, okay? So, from there, what do you do as a prerequisite before you submit your letter of resignation? You need to check your PTO, and you need to see what their policy is for buyback of PTO. Or, better yet, take that vacation. You got a week's worth of PTO, two weeks, three weeks, start letting it atrophy. In other words, let's say this week here, you don't do 40 hours. You only come in three days out of the week. If they don't let you take a week's worth of PTO, let it atrophy. Let it just gradually break down and start using up that, burn that PTO, man. Because then you know you're getting a full dollar amount on that PTO. I've been to hospitals where they will only buy back PTO at 50 cents on the dollar. Use your PTO. 
figure out if you can cash it in and you, and you know you've been saving it up and you want to get you know a nice fat paycheck at the end make sure that you are getting full dollar value if you're not stay home don't go into work and that might conflict a little bit with with my next point my next point is your workload document what you do at your work and it's going to help out your coworkers like what I'm saying is document the areas that you currently attend to. It's not always what they think it is. So if there's special places that you visit every morning on rounds and your customers th expect that of you, then write that down. Say every morning I go through the operating rooms and I pick up equipment in this location and this location or et cetera. Just document what you currently do to assist with your coworkers. Your coworkers are not your enemies, all right? If anything, they're people that you know are gonna miss you and you're gonna miss them for sure. So make sure that you document what you do. Now, the next thing that you need to do is you need to document any of your proprietary knowledge. So if you have something that you do, let's say every once in a while you have to go and you open up a flush valve on a certain device to make sure that you don't get an overflow three days into the week you need to document that so somebody will carry on in propriety in your absence. So document what you do and your uh, proprietary knowledge. If there's a, a password to a device that you set, which is ridiculous, it's really ridiculous when, when Biomed set individual passwords on like networks. Um, but anyway, if it happens, if you set a password on something, then document it and write it down and make sure that you create a summary of all this stuff to submit to your boss and your team in your absence, okay? So that's just a couple of things that you need to do. Your work ethic, all right? Right up until the day you leave. Every single time I leave a job, my last day of work there is always gonna be my busiest day. My absolute busiest day is my last day of working for a company or for a hospital. And that's because not only are you going around and saying goodbye to people and whatnot, but you are tying up loose ends. There are so many loose ends that we acquire that we just, you need to tie them up before you leave. So many biomeds, they just leave and then you're stuck for the next three months figuring out uh, what this person did or where he left off on a certain work project or whatever. So. That's just another thing, guys. Uh, your vendors, that's, a, that's another one. Your vendors, contact your vendors and update them on your status because they're still gonna be emailing you service reports. They're gonna be calling you when they need assistance on an equipment or tracking a device down or whatever. Contact your vendors and update them on your current work status and update them on your future employment status. Your vendors. It's gonna be very important. If you have important um, vendor account codes and telephone numbers, make sure that that's all documented too. Your vendor telephone numbers and your accounts for you know whatever device. If you have certain contracts that you work with and nobody else knows that certain stuff is under contract or maybe it's not under contract, make sure people know that you're leaving. There's not gonna be coverage in your absence if you are solely responsible for that device or if you have certain contractors like I have Drager if you have a, a contractor like Drager and you you know frequently interact with that person write that person's contact info down for your coworkers in your absence but anyway guys uh, there's I could go on and on about um, the professionalism and documenting your current work. But the next thing, and probably one of the most important things that you do, is your resignation letter. Remember what I said in the beginning, your resignation is not personal. It might be, but don't make it personal. Do not write a personal or vindictive letter, okay? Don't do it. Make it professional and make it short and sweet. Make it, like most of my resignation letters are very simple. It goes something like this. Uh, dear whoever it is, this letter is to inform you 
that I am officially submitting my letter of resignation. The next sentence that you should put in there is, my last day of work is going to be blank. They always say give two weeks, but the higher up you get in the hierarchy, give them more time. And usually the place that you're going is very understanding of that. So in somebody like my position, I'm a biomed team leader, I'm probably gonna give three weeks to a month worth of notice. And a month is pretty standard when you're running a team. It gives you time to prep for you know your team to make sure that they're all trained up. It gives your boss a little bit of time to write your job description for when he re-advertises it. It just gives everybody time to kind of cope with your pending loss. So that is just one of the things. Just make it short and sweet, just a couple sentences that is your official letter of resignation and that's it and just leave it on their your boss's desk or something uh, especially if you have a conflict with your boss just leave a message in his mailbox on his door or leave it you know on his desk don't make it personal I mean if you got a problem with your boss or something don't don't write it in a letter okay we are a small career field in small career fields, people talk. People know each other. Man, I know people all around the United States. And yes, I've got dirt on all sorts of places. I, man, if I told you guys some of the stuff that I know, none of you would come to Houston looking for jobs. All right? And that would be sad because you would be missing out on some interesting experiences, some wonderful people. That My current OR is one of the best operating rooms I have ever worked with ever these guys are awesome absolutely awesome uh, so I mean if somebody wanted to come here and you know work as a surgical biomed you know I would promise you that you are working with one of the best operating rooms to work with excellent opportunity especially if you're a junior biomed but uh, and the very last thing and I'm gonna have trouble with this too okay especially with this channel I have the ability to uh, just put people on blast and that is not professional I know this I've already said some stuff that you know probably some people are like oh my gosh um, he shouldn't have said that and trust me I could just go on and on I could make a whole channel on just stuff that I see every day but um, one of the things that you have to be aware of is don't go to the next place and then put the hospital up on blast like hey don't work at this hospital you know, I could definitely say that sometimes, but don't do it, man, uh, because somebody knows somebody, and in some ways, it's going to limit your future, okay? But anyway, guys, uh, that's all I got for you. It's a happy Friday. Oh, I was so just spun up today. I was really spun up, and um, today was not a good day, but I am home my kids are waiting for me in here. I'm going to go and enjoy my weekend. And I just want you guys to know the hiring freeze is largely kind of over. You know, hospitals all over the place are hiring. So if you are going to submit a letter of resignation, do it right. Make sure you do your homework before you submit that letter of resignation. And after you submit the letter of resignation, make sure you maintain your professional conduct and make sure you tie up loose ends, okay? All right, guys, have a good weekend. Thanks for watching.